So I want to talk about the immigration debate here in America, but before I get into that, I have to acknowledge the refugee crisis that has become a worldwide talking point this summer and is the worst refugee crisis since World War II. If you saw the movie Children of Men back in the day, there are powerful scenes where our future society in 2027 is on the brink of collapse and countless refugees are being held in camps across England. And those refugees look Middle Eastern and African, with Arabic graffiti scribbled everywhere across the walls. That movie is all I can think about right now, how prophetic it felt when I first watched it back in 2006, and how very real it feels right now. Trust me, if you haven't seen Children of Men, please do so. Our world is currently in turmoil, and our first line of defense against the evil we're witnessing must be compassion. As a recent New York Times editorial said, it is inexcusable that some find themselves today in situations that are even more hopeless and degrading than the ones that prompted them to flee in the first place. In my home country of Australia, once known as the lucky country, refugees who are mostly from Afghanistan, Iraq, Iran or Sri Lanka, not the most peaceful places on earth, are arriving by boat and treated as subhuman either diverted to Indonesia or sent to processing centers where they're treated like animals and rarely granted asylum. Have you heard of the Border Force Act there? It recently was passed in Australia and makes it a crime punishable by a two-year prison sentence for employees at these detention camps to even discuss the conditions there publicly. Meanwhile, Australia is a signatory to the United Nations Convention on Refugees and is legally obligated to grant anyone fleeing persecution and seeking asylum the right to enter the country. Can someone remind our new Prime Minister of that, please? You know, I'll never forget growing up in Australia and watching the news and being led to believe that all refugees, all immigrants in general, were ethnic, yellow, brown and black. People like my grandmother who came from Lebanon on a ship with her poverty-stricken family back in the 1930s. Then I grew up and I did my own research. Did you know the number of unlawful non-citizens, meaning those who overstay their visas and live in Australia illegally, is more than the total number of boat arrivals to Australia between 2000 and 2013? Now, these unlawful non-citizens who overstay their visas and become illegal... Where do they come from, do you think? Well, a significant number are from New Zealand, the United Kingdom, and America. Now, don't even get me started on those Australians who are anti-immigration due to fears of letting criminals in our beautiful country when a majority of their ancestors were criminals brought to Australia as part of a penal colony and they stole the land from Aboriginal people in the first place. It's the same as current Republican presidential nominee Donald Trump who I promise I'll mention just once here, calling undocumented migrants to America criminals and rapists, when the same could be said for the founding fathers of the United States. Speaking of America, the good old Statue of Liberty says, give me your tired, your poor, your huddled masses yearning to breathe free. Well, I'm here in New York working legally with a college education and a relatively successful career. I'd hate to call myself poor in comparison to others, but technically I am. And I'm tired and I'm yearned to breathe free in America since I touched down almost 10 years ago. The shadow of not being able to renew my work visa and stay in this incredible country for various reasons haunts me every single day. And I know there are many others in my position. I believe we all deserve the opportunity in this world to live where we believe we'll be better off. And you'll never understand the fight that takes unless you're in it. So, while refugees are forced to leave home to escape things like war, migrants, like myself, leave home voluntarily to try making our lives better with a new job or education. And as journalist Jose Antonio Vargas, himself an undocumented migrant, i.e. an illegal told Time Magazine in 2012, the issue of migration is arguably the most fundamentally misunderstood issue in America, and I would say the world, today. Governments must start listening to our voices, paying attention to our stories, and then moving forward 
with a broader vision for the betterment of everyone. Do you know how hard I have to fight to be here in America? Do you know the money I've spent to be here? What I've sacrificed for my dreams? And yes, I've done things the right way. That's mostly because I have a huge fear of messing with the US government because I love living here. But not everyone is able to do it this way. Of course, there must be thorough background checks for all new arrivals in any country. But we must start taking into account why people are traveling, legally or illegally. I travel from the other side of the world to live in America to contribute to society here and build my dream life here, just as my grandparents traveled from the other side of the world to live in Australia. What's the difference now in 2015 and why is it so much harder? And they're trying to brainwash people like me, get this, who've put in so much time and money and sacrifice to live legally in America to turn against those who've come here without going through that same process. But I won't do that and I can't do that. You know why? Because do you know how much these undocumented residents in America live in absolute fear? Why would you put yourself through that unless it was the only choice you felt you had? Why would you risk being thrown out? Why would you go through that stress? Trust me, I cannot describe the stress of feeling unsettled like my time here might be up at any minute. It has made me physically sick more times than I care to remember over 10 years and I'm here legally. I'm considered a legal non-resident alien. An alien for God's sake, you know, it's not the most comforting label. So how does America's current immigration debate affect the appeal of a country so many of us do still see as the promised land. Well, that remains to be seen. But before you're so quick to judge, as an American, an Australian, or anyone fortunate enough to be from a first world country, remember that if you're happy with where you were born, you are one of the lucky ones. You are blessed beyond belief. Why would you rob your fellow man or woman or child of that feeling unless your ancestors were the original people of your land and didn't have to travel to get there and even then please have some empathy for those risking it all right now to live the kind of life you already lead is it so much to open your heart and your mind and your home and say welcome